problem that all those countries that are in the lockdown right, right now or all those communities that have the lockdown, they need to figure this out. How are they going to come out of the lockdown? What will happen after the lockdown? And what should be the processes, procedures that need to be taken care of after the lockdown? So that is where we want to go today. Uh, <coughs> of course, of course, this is clear. Sorry for the uh, the cat. Uh, of course, this is clear that we haven't yet seen every country that is in the lockdown. We have not seen what will happen after the lockdown because that is future. Uh, <coughs> however, we can see what is going on with the countries that have already come out of the lockdown, for example, South Korea. We can look at other countries as well, for example, China or Taiwan. But I want to focus on South Korea for the, the transparency of their data. And my apologies for the cat here. Good morning, Sue. How are you? Good morning, Chantel. How are you doing? Good morning, Yasmin. <laughs> I am feeling well. I just had a slight cough because of some vapor here uh, from the kitchen. <clears throat> so I'm all set. So, and my cat is for some reason more active and chatty today than usual. So, so let's see. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> let's continue. There is a, there is a, um, finding the cat and <laughs> catching it going on. Okay, so the cat has been removed. Hey guys, how are you? So let's continue our discussion. Today we're going to talk about the lifting the lockdown, and we are going to see a couple of things that. Here is what is going to happen. Of course, there are social norms, the community norms that need to be taken care of. And then there are some medical things that we can de do. And then there are some social administrative things that may be needed. And for me, the best case or the best example to use is going to be South Korea. I do not want to use any other country for this. I believe Germany has done very good. They, they have uh, mimicked South Korea. I think here in the US, we haven't done that well. Uh, I think there are countries like Sweden who have an, uh, an observation going on, exploration going on right now, and we'll see what happens. But for the given population and given freedom that South Korea has uh, taken with that, the, uh, the progress they have made is interesting. And they have come out of the lockdown. They're almost coming out of the lockdown now. They have given a lots of... Uh, freedom to the citizens to roam around. They were already doing that. And that now there are restrictions are now becoming lax. So it is a very interesting model to see what can be done while giving the normal freedoms to the citizens and still making them sensitive enough to be able to do this, um, um, take care of the social distancing. And then what are their trends and norms that they are taking care of? So let's start. So don't trip. South Korea had that huge sect-based cluster and they managed it. Well. Absolutely, they managed that. Taiwan did a very good job as well. So let's look at how some of these things need to be taken care of. So let's say today, so here is what is our current state. <clears throat> and there is a article here. So of course, these are more than the studies. These are articles. Studies would come out as well from the countries that what were they doing. But this is an interesting study where Hong Kong, Taiwan, and South Korea, they have managed the, um, the epidemic without much of a lockdown. And similarly here, this is another article, South Korea, conquer, Korea conquered coronavirus without a lockdown, a model to follow, question mark. And then this is the worldometer. We'll look at some data here. I feel sad that we are at the top here. Uh, being US. <clears throat> now let's start our discussion. Look, the way the discussion we will fi uh, formalize today is that we are going to look at some of the medical things that can be done and then some social norms and then vaccination discussions and then um, uh, treatment discussions. 
So lifting the lockdown, we are hoping that at some point we can get out of the lockdowns. <clears throat> the basic problem for getting out of the lockdown are the following. So let's say this is a community. And this community has, it is, let's say, under lockdown for 14 days. Good. <clears throat> now, some of these articles, they cause, they run ads, and that causes a lot of processor chewing. So I'm going to remove them just so that their ads are not killing us. OK, back here. <clears throat> so let's say this is a community, and there are a bunch of people living in this community. Let's say they are here, here, here. And they are under lockdown for about 14 days, 14 days. 14 days, I shouldn't have said weeks. Just like yesterday in my Remdesivir, instead of saying adenine analog, I kept teaching uracil uh, analog. So sometimes I do that. Anyway, 14 days. Now, let's say that the viral incubation time, viruses incubation time is also from 2 to 14 days. It is entirely possible that within this community, let's say on the day of 13, there may be somebody who was asymptomatic here on day zero or day one, became will become symptomatic here on the day 14. On the day 13, they are transmitting. Remember that we did a study that people can be tra transmitting two days before they become symptomatic. So now they are transmitting on the day 13 and 12. So when the lockdown is lifted, that day, they become symptomatic. And then about 14 days after, the other people they made sick could become symptomatic. So lifting the lockdown, one of the issue in there is that the people within the community may still be making each other sick. And as soon as you allow more mingling and more crowding, they can start accelerating the, the virus spread. So that is pro from within the community. Second thing is that if we have a community, let's say this is the community, and the community has visitors coming from outside, then how do we figure out that they will not bring the infection to the community itself? And maybe the community has done everything to make sure that they are healthy and they are safe and they're fine, but visitors that are coming in, they might bring the um, infection in. That was one of the issues with, let's say, South Korea had to have that challenge. China had to have that cha challenge, Taiwan, and whatever other countries that are under the lockdown. The visitors is another problem. For example, just to keep us uh, interested in this one, South Korea has really gone down on the number of new cases. Even then, their new cases, 35% of the new cases are still sourced from outside. So these are the two basic problems. Then the third problem, so this is the problem of spread. Then the third problem is the one that we are facing, and that is the vulnerable, vulnerable part of the community. So we, we know from our previous discussions that people who are higher in age, people who have comorbidities, they are more vulnerable to this virus. So how do within our community, we take care of our vulnerable? And that is the right thing to do. That is a responsible thing to do. That is a civil thing to do. Uh, so please don't put comments under the YouTube where there are weird uh, solutions offered. OK, so back here. In theory, what we can do is this. Here is the pandemic starting. We go into lockdown because we do not have resources to take care of everyone who can become sick if the spread is, accelerate, is going on in an accelerated way. So lockdown is really to decelerate or slow down the spread. That also allows the medical uh, facilities to run at an optimal level and save as many lives as possible and reduce as much misery as possible. Then after, the, after we are in the lockdown, just like we are right now, many of us are, then we are either going to hope, hope that we develop herd immunity. In case of the 
coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, the herd immunity is going to be to uh, 50% to 67 to 78%. So that's a large swath of our community that needs to become immune or develop the disease and become recovered to offer the herd immunity. And I have done that discussion separately. Now, the other thing that may be possible, let's say the herd immunity is something that is not going to be achieved fast. Then another thing that can be possible is to do the vaccination. And in here, in my flow, it is more sequential, but you should think about it in parallel with the other measures. And I would show that down below. Vaccination is another. And then it is also possible that maybe the virus would just mutate away and go away, or maybe there is a seasonality and the virus is at a peak now, but two months later it has gone away and would stay away for six months. That give us a chance to recover and, and develop our mechanisms to fight with it. So vaccination or other measures may be needed. In case of a lockdown, I also want to make sure that we think about it. There is a complete lockdown where we have everyone other than essential workers out, everyone else is inside the homes. They are isolated, they are quarantined, they are just in the homes. So that is a complete lockdown. And then there is partial lockdown, which many countries has done, including, uh, I would say, so I, I would hate to label some country that way if they do not agree with it, but I think that partial lockdown is wherever there are partial restrictions. So that may be South Korea, that may be Taiwan, that may be Sweden, that may be Japan, that may be Hong Kong, that may be other countries, even New York City, although we, ha we are hammered bad there. But partial lockdown simply, in my opinion, is where you have not gotten everyone inside the home all the time and there is no contact. Um, then let's continue to the other possibility. This was a message that was sent to me by um, a person named Neeraj Pant, and he is a hospital administrator. And he had said, how about shorter duration of lockdowns? So if Neeraj is here, uh, we can have that discussion. What he means is that maybe instead of two weeks or three weeks or four weeks or perpetual lockdown for months, how about one week lockdown, one week open, one week lockdown and one week open? So that uh, that is an interesting thing as well. So there is Greg from Australia who is saying that we have uh, partial lockdown. So Greg, tell us what is the partial lockdown look like in Australia? So while uh, Greg gives us some more data, we'll continue our discussion. So lockdowns can have these. I actually believe that when we ask a single person or a family to go in isolation or quarantine, that is a kind of a lockdown as well. Or when we ask someone at the airports that when you come in and you have an essential quarantine quarantine for two weeks, that is a sort of a lockdown as well, but at a very rudimentary, very unit level, very small level. Okay, so now let's look at one more thing that I feel is very interesting with the lockdown is that we develop healthy habits. And what is that is that people who are in the lockdown, even if they were not aware of the proper sanitary ways of um, you know, helping their, their places around them or proper um, hygienic ways of living, the lockdown kind of forces everyone to think about what is the right thing to do. So it is kind of a training session as well for all of us. So SARS-CoV has kind of put us all through a training session and maybe made us a better species. Let's see. So I want to go here and talk a little more about how do we move from the lockdown. So imagine the virus is introduced here. We went into lockdown because we want to slow down the virus spread and we do not have the response to the virus yet. So we want to make sure that we are ready. And till that time, we do not allow a lot of damage to people's lives. So we ask everyone to go home. In that process, now what we are going to do is, number one, prevention is something that we start learning. That is what we're learning today. So what is happening is you say, all right, guys have social distancing. So imagine if we are coming out of the lockdown, social distancing has to continue. This is a huge deal for me, masks. 
masks is a huge deal for me i am a big proponent of surgical masks for everyone so you you want to lift the lockdown ask the people to wear masks and instead of sending thousands of billions of dollars of stimulus packages maybe give everyone five masks and ask them to wear masks mask would reduce a surgical mask would reduce more than 95% i believe of the transmission of the pathogen so if people are sick if i am sick and i'm able to walk around i'm not in, lying down in a hospital then if i'm wearing a surgical mask my transmission would be reduced by 95% and so 5% only is left to be transmitted and now if the other person is also wearing a mask the inward reception from a surgical mask reduces the infection uh, the chances to get the infection i believe by 50% so it is not very uh, very good on the inward it is good on the outward so if you combine them both both the the person who is sick and the person who is receiving that breath if they both are wearing masks there is a drastic drastic change and that is what south korea's lead doctor who is helping the pandemic or epidemic over there says as well he says i'm surprised that the west is not using masks he says for us the main stay other than the contact tracing and and testing is the masks so mask is very very important i am a big big proponent of that i do not have a mask factory i do not have an affiliation with anyone with mask maybe we should put together a factory for making masks but i am a big proponent of masks hand washing open air preference so this is another thing that is really important when we lift the lockdown it will be interesting for us to be more in the open air compared to closed doors because the aerosol and the droplets are more abundantly present and they live longer inside the closed doors and they can probably be recycled by the air conditioning and fans and those things too so prefer open air spaces prefer sitting outside for meetings prefer sitting outside for food and dinner prefer sitting outside to uh, to look at your patients maybe at the at every hospital outside there should be an open air uh, outpatient department where people come in there for the first time and then from there they would then be brought into the hospital if needed maybe the medical drug delivery for example kaiser instead of people going in in there in the uh, clinic they uh, or the uh, or the pharmacy inside the building the pharmacy delivers it outside or at their home so open air spaces are preferred or should be preferred then protecting the vulnerables so all societies have folks who are vulnerable by age or by comorbidities and especially the people who have cardiovascular issues then hypertension then diabetes then chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases asthma and then the um, cancer patients and we should take care of them preferably so as we allow the remaining community to start becoming active we should provide financial help and medical help to all those who are vulnerable that is not a lots of money spent while this economic cycle for the remaining part of the country is going so i believe that that is what we should be doing and then if we allow the country to start opening up when people have proper prevent preventive measures they are wearing masks they are keeping themselves at a social distance the public places are being cleaned correctly then we don't need to send bailouts to every family because not every family is suffering anymore only those folks who are vulnerable and we have decided as a community as a civilized community to have them stay home and then provide them support so this is one so this is one step towards lifting the lockdown for us to become more uh, sharp at preventative measures then the second step is partial reopening and the partial reopening is going to be i i do not agree with reopening those places where public crowds can be uh, formed instead just like we have grocery stores right now maybe other uh, stores that can serve from outside so they can bring the things out and then serve from there or can be in open air they can run in open air maybe some restaurants with proper dis the table distances and then in the open air maybe this these can be open so partial reopening then similarly i like this idea that one can do testing 
and we will talk about testing in a second, one can do testing and then see which community has gotten a better herd immunity uh, approach or level, and maybe they are allowed to start opening more than other communities. Yes, I, uh, Greg, I definitely believe that temperature, so I had done a discussion uh, in the past, the temperature, humidity, they have a role in reducing the viral spread. So warm areas do have that role. I'm kind of very curious about uh, countries like India, Pakistan, where either they are under-reporting or they are doing very well, and we should study that why, what is going on? Is it the BCG vaccine? It is, is it the warm temperature? Is it a different kind of a lockdown? It would be interesting to see what's going on there. Hmm, Chantal, interesting. The Kusi theory, so 70% of 100,000 to 70, then 70 to 86 was spread is thought to be asymptomatic. So think about that for a second. Uh, we would talk about asymptomatic because when I did the uh, Swedish, uh, sorry, when I did the discussion about Sweden, uh, many, many people came in and said that, hey, we were, uh, we did not count the asymptomatic and the ones who already have the infection, but that is the case everywhere. So we'll talk about that in a second, acoustic theory. Back here to the partial uh, reopening. So we start partially reopening. We open maybe one day in a week. We open maybe six hours. We open for different times. We say, here are the three hours that are for elderly and here are the remaining 10 hours that are for non-elderly. Or maybe we do something like South Korea did. What South Korea is saying after the lockdown, they have lifted the lockdown and they are very, very successful. Look at South Korea. I think South Korea is a great model for every country. Uh, look at South Korea. South Korea's population, I believe, is 51 million. So here is South Korea. Population 51 million. And with that population, 10,000 cases and 240 deaths. And in last few days, they have really uh, gotten hold of the situation after the lockdown. They have very few cases that are new and they have very few deaths, I think in single digits or even not those. So I think no new death, but new cases are in single digits. So they've done very well and the people are uh, pretty free at this time. So partial lockdown. Here is what is important. Testing. U.S. and South Korea had gotten the first cases almost on the same days. What South Korea did, they said that, hey, we went to a war. We knew that this is going to be bad. And they, they knew that from 2015, they were burnt once before by the MERS. So they were ready. And so what they did was they started doing a lots of contact tracing. So if I go here for South Korea for a second, they did testing, 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 testing. Why is that important? Because when we test a lot of people, look what happens when we are testing. We are detecting people earlier before they become severely ill. Then we are able to manage them early. There are so many drugs that can be given, for example, hydroxychloroquine or azithromycin or remdesivir or ivermectin or maybe tons of other test drugs that can be given. But when a person is healthier, it is better to give those drugs at that time so that the viral replication can be reduced. We can tell that person that, hey, you are sick. Please take vitamin C, vitamin D. Please take zinc. Please take quercetin. We can manage them better, not only just by asking them to stay at home, but providing them better support as compared to letting them, not testing them, letting them become sick and then become serious. So we can manage them better. We can figure out who out of those who are tested are vulnerable and take care of aggressively take care of their situation. And then we can figure out who are healthy and allow them to continue to work or, or support the society. This would also reduce spread. Why would it reduce spread? Because the people who know, for example, if I am tested and I come back positive, I'll go in isolation or quarantine. And so now I will not be spreading more because I'm aware that I have a problem. And the same thing with the masks as well, that 95% mask. So back here. So as we are in the lockdown, the preparation for the government, for the societies, for the administration should be to do more and more testing. South Korea's mainstay was testing. And the second part is contact tracing, contact tracking or tracing. 
contact tracing, I think, can even be done with simple apps nowadays. Contact tracing simply means that if I become COVID-19, anyone who has been near me and has been in contact with me in last, let's say, couple of weeks, they receive a text message saying, hey, somebody came in contact with you who was COVID-19 and you, uh, they, come in, they came in contact with you uh, 10 days ago. If you have not developed any symptoms, please stay in isolation for another week. If you have developed symptoms, please contact your doctor. And that is a better situation because not only the person who is uh, sick, let's say me, not only I know that I'm sick, but everyone who has been around me is also informed and now they can be better taken care of. South Korea nowadays, what they're doing is they're saying that, okay, anybody who has symptoms, they would voluntarily stay at home. And if they come out and they have symptoms, for example, they use the temperature at the um, travel uh, portals. And so if they, they look at the temperature and they have an issue, they ask them to wear a white wristband, which tells other people that this person may be sick. And if they refuse to wear a wristband because there is no law and this is, an, uh, this is a, um, a voluntary thing to do, then they are asked to go to a quarantine. And I think that is the correct thing. Instead of having the whole society in quarantine, we should have the people who are becoming sick. If I become sick today, I should be in quarantine. So testing is very important. Contact tracking is very important. That would allow people, this the part of the society that needs to be supported for COVID-19, we will support them instead of the whole society in the lockdown. Then this is also very important. You know from my previous talks, I am a big proponent of prophylaxis. Again, yes, I agree with this, that there is nothing tested. But guys, do you think there can be anything tested for a new strain of virus? There's going to be nothing tested. Virus did not come with this medicine, medicine with it to say, here is me, virus, and here is the prescription for me. So virus has come in. We do not have a prescription for it. We are going to test in various ways. We should be humane. We should be ethical. We should be moral in our testing, but the tests are going to happen. So if we have a lead, fortunately, we have leads that hydroxychloroquine works, azithromycin works, uh, possibly vitamin C, D would augment the immune system in general. Um, Quercetin and zinc can be help, helpful. We should use them. So prophylaxis should be given. I appreciate, I, in every talk I say this, I appreciate Indian government that they have given prophylaxis of uh, hydroxychloroquine to their healthcare workers. We should ask them what kind of data are they seeing, but that is a great thing they're doing. So prophylaxis, you come out of the quarantine, you come out of the lockdown, all those folks who may have symptoms or all those folks who are vulnerable or all those folks who are going to come into contact with higher traffic of people, they should be given prophylaxis. Then if we continue, we develop social norms, we start doing testing, we start partially reopening, we do lots of contact tracking and we be ready for the um, prophylaxis. The result of that, what we expect is either we reach herd immunity, which is a really tough thing to 50% of the, of the community or 78% of the community becomes immune to the virus. Interestingly, what I'm hearing is my Santa Clara County, they did the um, antibody test and they said 3 to 4% people were already immune without them knowing. So that's a good thing, but that is not very useful for herd immunity. Sweden is coming back and saying that we feel that at this time in Stockholm, 20% of the people are uh, immune now. They have recovered. And they are thinking, Tegnell, who is their epidemio uh, chief epidemiologist, epidemio he's saying that by in another two weeks, they would reach herd immunity. I do not know what is the number they're trying to reach, 50%, 60%, 70%. But they're saying they, they would reach there. So either we reach herd immunity. That means we would still have more people becoming sick, but they would become sick at a lower rate. Or we have developed a vaccine. Or the seasonality causes the virus to go away for some months. Or the virus mutates enough that it goes away. And there may be more options. So what is happening in the meantime, while we are reaching that point, how about we also look at arrivals in the society? 
So remember, once a society comes out of the lockdown and says, okay, we are good. Now, what about the people who are coming in? So let's also follow how uh, South Korea has been doing. What South Korea has been doing is that they say, if you are coming out, coming in from outside, there is two weeks of quarantine. quarantine. What I do not know is that, is it mandatory for everyone or is it for the people who may have symptoms, for example, fever? But anyways, there is two weeks of quarantine. And I was reading a report, I, I'll put those uh, links in the description, that last week a, there were three people who were visitors from outside. One of them were, were a British citizen. He came in, he refused to be in quarantine. He went around meeting people for, and he met 23 people. He developed symptoms in another 10 days. And then uh, now there is a chance that the people he met would have symptoms as well or have COVID-19. So the uh, mayor of that city where he, that British citizen had landed, they have said that we'll punish him. But generally what they're doing is they're saying, that, okay, if you're coming in to our society, please have a quarantine, stay in the quarantine for two weeks, prove to us, prove to yourself that you're safe for others and yourself. And then we would let you in the society. So we can do that as well as a, um, for the new arrivals. So we do the testing, we check their fever, we maybe do a quick antibody test. We have them in isolation or quarantine. We do a lots of contact tracking wherever they are going. We track them, of course, anonym anonymously, privately, without uh, disclosing that data to other agencies, but all, all the health agency can track them. And once they have been tracked, we can know if they become sick, we can know with, who gave them the disease or if they came in with the virus. And again, South Korea is a good example that 35% of their new cases are from outside. Even then, with all of this, South Korea has done really well. They have their death rate at 240. And if we look at Taiwan, Taiwan, look at Taiwan. It is interesting to see these countries. Where is Taiwan? So um, this is my last point. And then hold on. So Taiwan is what four hundred and twenty-eight people and six deaths. That is that is amazing. And if you read up how Taiwan did it, Taiwan says that they the, as soon as they heard that there was an infection going on in Wuhan, they immediately restricted travel from China. They started testing, they started doing contact tracing, and they started taking care of people. So out of a 23 million people's population, only 428 confirmed cases and six deaths. Look at South Korea. Let's say if we can trust their data more than any other, then 51, people, 51 million people, 10,000 confirmed cases, and 240 deaths. So that is what I think is the way to move forward. Uh, now I can look at the chat here and I can uh, answer your questions as well. So please, if you've had a question before, please ask that again. So for me, if I am a citizen who is now outside of the lockdown, here are the things which I think should be done. I should be made, wearing a mask. And I keep this mask with me. I think it is not the best, best mask, but I should be wearing a mask. That is one. Wear gloves have your shoes clean. There should be places outside where people walk on some sort of a, a mat or something and their shoes are cleaned out. Uh, before they enter the grocery stores, their shoes are cleaned out. If the people are uh, vulnerable or if they have been in contact with someone who's COVID-19, start them on prophylaxis with hydroxychloroquine, vitamin C, vitamin D, um, uh, zinc and quercetin. Just give the prophylaxis, it is cheap. And of course, not for the people with the heart issues and eye issues and blood issues. These can kill in those cases. So this is a then have the vulnerable part of society protected separately. So instead of supporting everyone in the society, instead of giving checks to everyone, maybe those people who cannot actually take care of themselves because they cannot go out and because they are they need to be isolated for their vulnerabilities, we make we support them and we allow the remaining society to work. So uh, some social norms, some medical norms, and some uh, visitors' uh, norms for them. Social distancing continues. Um, masks continue. 
cleanliness, hygienic activities continue. And that is how we lift the... South Korea is a great example. We can lift our lockdown now looking at how South Korea has done. Contact tra tracking is very important. So if we say, I'm, I'm an American as well. So if I come out and say, you know what, our freedoms are being taken care of, uh, taken away, if you are contact tra tracking me, we have to give something at this time. So either we stay inside or we make other people sick or we allow some sort of a testing and contact tracking. In the US, I believe testing is the most important thing to be done at this time. So, okay, so that is my discussion. I'm gonna stop there. Uh, let's see what, has, what is in the... So, Vishtan Khan, is BCG having any role? So I'll talk about BCG tomorrow. I think Trump was referring to intravenous UV therapy, but sounded like an idiot. Um, yeah, th that politics is just in a strange, strange state at this time. Josh says, it's hard, hard to keep that 50, 60 age group to home since most are working still. So Josh, that is the thing. So instead of sending everyone a, a bailout check, we should divert the funds to support people who are vulnerable. So they should get bigger amounts of check or for longer duration of time till maybe a vaccine comes out or till a herd immunity level is achieved, or maybe there is a drug that is found. So till that time, they should be supported instead of the whole society being supported. Can a small model be created by the world for herd immunity? So uh, please don't throw flames at me, but think about Sweden. Sweden is saying that they are not intentionally creating herd immunity, but they are not locking down either. So they are saying that we'll reach the herd immunity in a couple of weeks. So that is a model. Although in my opinion, I know that I'm going to be yelled at once again if I do this, but I'm going to show you this. Look, um, if we look at South Korea, where is South Korea here? South Korea here, 50, 55 million people's population has been in, uh, has gotten into lockdown and then come out of lockdown and only 240 deaths. So people from Sweden continue to say that the rest of the world is in lockdown. And when we, when you guys are going to come out of the lockdown, you guys are going to be in a disastrous state. Not really. It is really the behavior of the administration and the people, not the fault of the lockdown. South Korea went under lockdown and then they came out and they are still working very well. And there is 240 deaths. And look at the South Korea's cases. They went under the lockdown. they they had the peak, then they came out of the peak. Look at the new cases. They still have the new cases, but they have no further deaths. To be fair, a new case that comes in today, we have to wait to anywhere from six to eight weeks to see if there are any deaths from there. Uh, then if you look at Sweden, Sweden is 10 million population, 17,000 cases, 2,152 um, deaths. And I do not see how this, uh, this uh, graph over here can be compared to a graph like this. And yes, sure, this graph may become like this in another two, three, four days, two, three, four weeks. We will see it should happen because we cannot have more people uh, at stake. I do not know what would happen till that time. Maybe the herd immunity would develop in next one week and maybe another two, 300 deaths and then everything is good. But remember this, the people who just came in today, these are 751, they have a six to eight weeks time to figure out who out of them is gonna survive and not. So Sweden has a different kind of a way, but somebody had said that, is there a model that can be so i would i would uh, look at sweden a little more carefully because there is there are hopes that that model is going to work so um, i don't know if i was um, i was sharing this or not but here is the sweden's graph for the new cases and if you see it is not really going down and if you see here this is south korea's graph which went up and then has come down. So I would look at South Korea as a more interesting way to look at how we can have our societies open up again. So here is where we are at. Uh, so 
Seppel, bottom line, how long do you think it will take to find a treatment to develop a vaccine? So, of course, we have vaccines that are ready for trial right now. It is the trial and then the testing, and that can take anywhere from six months to 18 months. So vaccine is probably going to be more. My thinking is that the lockdowns are going to start lifting some of these things that preventive measures, some prophylactic measures, some visitor uh, contact tra tra tracking would happen, and we would start operating again very soon. I think that we should not be silly with the opening up the society and just say, all right, all of a sudden, everybody can go out and start doing whatever you want. I think that can aggravate the situation. And if this happens, for example, in Europe, they said that if you are going to li lift a lockdown, you have to inform, be a good neighbors, inform your neighbors that you are going to do it, inform your neighboring countries so that they are aware. And if they do not agree with it, they can lock down the borders and say, okay, please don't come here. Similarly, if we are going to have lockdowns lifted, let's say within the US, then at least if they are prematurely being lifted or if there are not the right processes applied, then at least the surrounding communities should be aware that this is happening so they can protect themselves. Okay, so we are good here. Any other thing? Um, in this discussion. I, I would keep urging us to look at South Korea a little bit more closely. And I would say this as a statement that it is not necessary, it is incorrect to say that the people who would come out of lockdown is are going to have a disaster. No, look at South Korea, look at Taiwan, look at Hong Kong. I know that in Singapore there is another surge, but even with that other surge, you, you know that Singapore is still at a very, very tiny scale. So look at this, if we go to Singapore, this is Singapore, 12,000 cases, 12 deaths. And we are saying that, all right, look, they have another surge because they lifted the lockdown. And it is totally fair to say that these 1,400 cases, new cases that came in on 420, or these cases, 1,100, and all of these cases that are coming in now would have their consequences declared in six to eight weeks. So we cannot look at 12 deaths today to say that this is all justifiable. This is not justifiable because it would have a uh, consequence later on. But this still, look at this, 12 deaths. 12 de deaths. So, so they have done something good as well. And again, I keep saying testing, 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 contact tracking, social distancing. I would add some medical advice to that to say prophylaxis as well. So this is where we are at. I hope we are good with this one. Tomorrow, uh, what do you think? Should we talk about BCG and the warm countries like uh, India, Pakistan, other countries that have been using BCG and what is the effect of BCG? <coughs> Sorry, effect of BCG in there? Or should we talk about cardiovascular system and um, the COVID-19? Yeah, Greg, that is correct. A period has zero deaths, but has a, they they report six now. So, guys, thank you very much. We rescue people with very long term illness. Yeah, of course. So, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. I am getting a lots of uh, votes for BCG. If that is the case, we can talk tomorrow. I can tell you this. I'm not very. Um, uh, I'm not convinced yet that BCG itself has anything to do with this, but if you like, we can have this discussion. Uh, I'm seeing CVS as well. So do me a favor, continue to comment and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, I'm going to take off. Thank you very much for your time. Stay safe, stay healthy, and let's try to see how to become, how to open up our societies in a more responsible, civil, and correct way instead of just being, you know, knee jerk reaction to. Thank you very much.